Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 186 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case entitled The Best PCI for reasons that will become apparent shortly. The patient was a young gentleman who did not have any previous cardiac disease, and uh, he had a fairly heavy exercise, uh, heavy practice, and then afterwards developed retrosternal chest pain. He initially ignored it, however, the pain persisted, and he eventually presented to the emergency room. This is the initial EKG that shows anterior ST segment elevation with reciprocal ST segment changes in the inferior leads. And this is the same patient a few minutes later after sublingual nitroglycerin. The chest pain resolved. However, his troponin was elevated at 540 nanograms per liter. One could make an argument to take him directly to the cath lab, but given the lack of chest pain and the resolution of the ST segment elevation, he was sent for a coronary CT angiogram. These are the MIPS, the maximum intensity projections, essentially an easy automated uh, way to get a sense of the entire coronary tree, we do see the right coronary artery without any significant stenosis. However, we do see that the proximal LAD has an area that appears to have a filling defect, artifact in the circumflex, but no significant stenosis there as well. And this is uh, the axial view in which uh, we see the uh, left main going into the LAD, and we do see this uh, filling defect uh, into the LAD. However, so again, this is uh, essentially a filling defect within the LAD. We don't see any significant atherosclerosis in the remaining of the vessel. These are the so-called MPRs, or multi-planar reconstructions. Essentially, this is a way to rotate uh, the artery that has been reconstructed. And we're seeing again here at the rotation that there is this area of filling defect uh, within the proximal left anterior descending artery, no significant disease uh, elsewhere in the artery. Now, there are newer ways to look at the coronary CT angiogram. This is the AI system, the clear labs, that is very simple. One can essentially press on the vessel and the vessel becomes reconstructed automatically on the screen. We can see here the filling defect on the LAD. We can see the different vessels, diagonal, the circumflex. So without knowing much about analyzing CT, one can very easily look at the various vessels with automated reconstructions. Now here we do have the proximal LAD with the filling defect, and one can make the MPRs instead of curved straight. One can still see at that area, and one can rotate the multiplayer reconstructions, and in the rotation becomes again apparent that area of the filling defect. And one can also look at the axials, and the system automatically segments, and we can see exactly where we're looking at the cross-section of the vessel by having this uh, marker in the middle of the vessel. These are the cross-sections, and we can see that uh, when we are in the left main, there is no significant disease, but as we move in the LAD, there is a, a reduction of the lumen and the filling defect, which is the area of the dissection. So what to do? This is a patient who is clinically stable and has disease only in the proximal LAD. So for such patients, conservative treatment is the way to go. This patient actually was monitored for three days as an inpatient. He did not have any recurrent symptoms, and he was sent home on a beta blocker. However, if the patient has left main disease or uh, um, severe proximal two-vessel dissection, then uh, revascularization can be considered. And then if the patient is having ongoing symptoms, then either PCI or urgent bypass might be required. But in our case, again, we were fortunate, based on the coronary CT, we made the diagnosis of a single vessel proximal LAD dissection with a flow to the distal vessel. The patient remained asymptomatic and did not have a procedure. And why is it good to not have a procedure? Well, patients who have SCAD may be prone to have a worsening 
or have dissections if one does percutaneous coronary intervention. An example of this, fairly dramatic, is in the case 72 of the manual of uh, PCI, in which uh, the patient with SCAD had uh, subsequently left main dissection into the proximal ID in the circumflex, cardiac arrest requiring ECMO. So things can go south, and that is why in patients who are stable, it is best to avoid doing a uh, uh, PCI, or even diagnostic angiography, which might result in dissection of the coronary arteries. So to summarize, uh, in, uh, in this case, we had a young patient who had uh, chest discomfort, positive troponin, coronary CTA helped diagnose the spontaneous coronary artery dissection, and based on this and the clinical stability, he avoided the need for cardiac catheterization in PCI. So why do we call this the best PCI? Because sometimes the best PCI may be the one not done because it's always a balance between benefits and risk. In this case, the patient did very well and the dissection will likely heal spontaneously. Of course, to advise him to avoid the heavy exercise. But had we done cardiac catheterization and PCI, it is possible that we might have worsened the dissection and have had a complication. Thank you.